Behind the Badge, brought to you by Big O Tires. Many of Utah's first responders face their own personal battle with trauma on the job. Last week on Behind the Badge, we told you how often police or firefighters witness something horrific and what it does to their mental health. Today we explore what's being done about it in part two of Trauma's Emotional Toll, Behind the Badge. Recovering from trauma on the job is not an easy road for Utah police and firefighters. All day, every day, for decades in our career, it never goes away. We live in it. Whether he wants to or not, Ogden police officer Robert Evans says his mind can instantly go back to the worst calls of his career. There are so many. Uh, you just started the movie. That it's okay because uh, I can handle it now, but uh, you just started the movie. For some first responders, haunting images of horrific fires, shootings, or car crashes can be crippling. There's only so much uh, we as humans can hold before we come com become completely saturated with these stresses. For years, the stigma of trauma among first responders led many to suffer in silence. And the solution is not a one-pronged approach. There's now an evolving trend for responders to open up and accept those who do. The president of Utah's Fraternal Order of Police says he only sought help when his police friends noticed he was hurting and spoke up about it. Which was hard for them, it was hard for me, but it was the, it literally saved me. Offering this peer-to-peer -peer support is now a big part of Officer Evans' life. Since 2012, he's traveled the state with the Utah Critical Incident Stress Management Team, giving help to officers who experience a traumatic call. Right now, his team is averaging 110 visits a year. I want officers and first responders to know that there is hope. If you're in a dark tunnel like I was with very little light and very little air, you can see the light again. You can have hope. In Salt Lake County, there's some dark things behind the badge. Part of the dark Unified Police down. Wellness Program is training their supervisors to be more focused on first responders' mental health. They have the training in dealing with these type of issues that officers go through. They know how to identify trauma, what to say, what to do for these officers. Sheriff Rivera says their wellness program sets aside funding so officers can see therapists like Ken Allen, who specialize in trauma among first responders. Allen uses a therapy with eye movement called EMDR. He says on average can successfully weed out the trauma in just under four sessions. These types of therapies go in and it literally takes the emotion out of the experiences that they've had. And when that emotion is gone, then the mind is able to go in and process what has happened to them. Allen says the hardest part is simply convincing responders to make an appointment, then helping their agencies get funding to cover therapies off an expensive price tag. Earlier this year, the state legislature addressed trauma funding. Lawmakers passed a bill budgeting $5 million for first responders' mental health. Many say it's much appreciated but not enough to cover the state's widespread need. In all candor, one of our major agencies in the state would absorb that in a matter of one or two years. Salt Lake firefighter Sean Mummity says city funding is letting them expand their mental health services beyond responders to people who call 911. We added the community health access team where we send out qualified mental health professionals to a call that are dispatched at the same time as our firefighters. And we all show up together within minutes to a mental health emergency. For the responders who've taken advantage of the mental health resources now available, like therapy or peer support, they say it's life-changing. You hear people talk about that fog or that haze of depression, and, and once I got that squared away with myself, it really was like the sun came out and the sky was bluer. I don't know that I could adequately describe the, the impact that it's, that it's had. I'm doing very well. It's just hard for me to wrap my head around the fact that I can sit here and say that. While they can't change what they see on the job, these responders say emerging mental health tools like these give them hope to recover from the emotional toll. Based on what these responders tell me, that each officer or firefighter's personal battle with trauma could vary depending on their access to these resources. And that's why they're passionate about speaking up to hopefully encourage someone to ask for help and expand these tools in the future.